Uh, since you uh, mentioned the communication, the bees, I'll move, I'll, I'll move, I'll skip over a few of the other questions I had. Um, you know, you had written about the language of the bees and uh, bee communication or, you know, the bee dance points to evidence of distal communication and decontextualized language uh, in other species. Uh, how does this type of evidence speak to the origin of language, its nature, function, and purpose? Many people ask that question. And there's a question we should ask about why they're asking that question. So does anybody ask the question, what does human language tell us about the origin of the communication system of bees? That question sounds ridiculous. Nobody asks it. Is the question about the us ridiculous? I mean, these two systems evolve totally independently, but no connection between them. Uh, to study the communication of system of bees as if it uh, could tell us something about human language is exactly the same as studying human language uh, to see if it can tell you something about the communication system of bees. There's two totally separate paths of evolution. Right. There's a kind of, a, I don't know what the exact word for it is, an anthropomorphism or self-centered uh, uh -huh. a way to think about things which makes us fail to understand things like this. Like take all the work on, a lot of work has been done, great effort to try to train chimpanzees to somehow mimic parts of language. That's about as sensible as trying to train graduate students to mimic the uh, waggle dance of bees. Well, you could do it. You could take a bunch of graduate students and tell them, here's the way you wave your arms. Uh, you run to a flower. If you find a flower, you go back to where you started and you go like this and a couple other graduate students run out. And you get something which sort of looks like the communication system of bees, but you could never apply to the NIH and get a grant for that. It's too ridiculous. Why is trying to get chimpanzees to mimic human language less ridiculous. In fact, it isn't. But we somehow, there's some drive that makes people think we've got to show that humans are the culmination of what has happened in other species. We're not. I mean, insects can do things we can't do. Uh, I couldn't possibly navigate the way an ant can. I don't have the capacity, but my efforts to navigate are not a step towards the achievement of ants, just totally separate paths. Mm -hmm. We have to look at our, get over a kind of hurdle, which makes it difficult for ourselves to look at ourselves as part of nature. But if we are willing to do that, we can see that a lot of these questions just make no sense whatsoever just invert them and you can see they make no sense. Speaking of questions that make no sense, uh, you know, the concept of recursivity is fundamental to how language processes unfold and is one of the key linguistic universals. Uh, those hesitant to make universal claims have attempted to debunk this. Uh, and I know this is your, one of your favorite subjects, uh, <laughs> the work of Daniel Everett. I wanted, I wanted to hear you, on, you know, speak about this. I've heard you speak about it, obviously, in other contexts, but I wanted you to uh, kind of uh, elaborate on, on, on his work and his attempt to prove the lack of recursivity in the Paraha language. Uh, Everett's work began with a simple error, failure to read the sources he cited, just totally misunderstood the sources. That was a mistake. In normal science, it's been pointed out 10, 15 years ago, he's perfectly aware of it. Uh, every source that he cited pointed out that recursivity is a property of the faculty of language might or might not appear in particular languages. I mean, to take an analogy, it's a, a binocular vision is a part of the human visual faculty. 
suppose you found a tribe somewhere which wears a black patch over one eye from infancy. Would that tell you anything about the visual capacity? It would be a kind of a minor curiosity. Yeah, these people don't use the, their visual capacities. So if in fact you found a language which doesn't use recursivity, fact of the matter, it's very doubtful that there is such a language, including his. But if you found it, it would be a minor curiosity. It tells you nothing about the faculty of language. Now, the speakers of this language, Piraha, speak Portuguese perfectly. And they have the same faculty of language. Well, that was just a mistake at the beginning. He misread his sources. But you know, when a mistake is pointed out, uh, and you go on for 10 years uh, making the same claims, uh, mistake is not the right word for it. So there's basically nothing there, at most a minor curiosity, uh, further work on the languages questioned whether even that's true. But if it were true, it'd tell you nothing. Any more than a tribe with black patches would tell you something about vision. Mm -hmm.